going live. Thank All you. Right, very excited. Guys, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for uh, joining us for this luxury session. Uh, my name is Jeremy Collins. I am a luxury marketing coach. I have the privilege of talking to agents on a daily basis, helping them figure out their luxury journey. And so uh, that's my privilege. And I'm going to be the MC for today. But more importantly, I'm so, so excited to have Terry Conrad with us. Terry is the uh, project manager for EXP Luxury, and she's going to be our panel host. So she's going to do all, all the talking with moderating with our amazing luxury panel, do a little intro with them. And beyond that, guys, I will be in the chat. If you need fun for me, feel free to reach out in the chat. See you guys. Go ahead, Terry. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I am so grateful to everyone for being here. Um, I, I am new to this role and I am so excited about this division and the opportunity to speak with some amazing professionals who are leaders in their market. Um, we have with us today, Ed Kaminsky from Manhattan Beach, Lisa Perinto from Cape Cod. We have Noe, oh my gosh, De Leon from Dallas. All of these are experts and professionals here to share today with us their expertise, which is so amazing. Um, and I know, Ed, I saw you pop in there that one of your top, was it your 30 million was your highest? 30 million, yeah. So, so okay, so you know a thing or two about luxury probably. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, listen, I'm excited to share with the group today and really learn what um, some of you want to know about. And hopefully we can touch on some of those things, but looking forward to a great call. I love that. So yeah, so the agenda is we're going to have an organic conversation. The What we're really looking to understand primarily in this call is how we approach luxury networking, networking specifically. And I'm very curious to hear all of your stories because you're all leaders in your market. And we'd love to hear your story. How did we, how do we approach luxury networking? And um, did that come naturally? Or did we start at a lower price point and build out our network? How did that look for each of you? Maybe I'll start with you, Ed. You know, it's a great question. And, and I had a very specific path and I try to tell people what my path was. And then I got, um, you know, some of you know, Michael Valdez, he, he made a comment to me one day and I was like, ah, but my, my path was when I started, I was in my twenties, I didn't have a lot of confidence in what I knew about real estate. So there was some discomfort there. So the thought of walking into a high end or luxury listing at that stage of my career, it was not something I felt good about. What I wanted to learn was just how to sell houses and how to sell a lot of them. So I set a goal early on my career to figure out how to sell 50 houses in one year and focused on the low end neighborhoods. And, and I got there, I got there relatively quickly, got to 50 transactions. And by that point I had confidence. And then I said, what the hell am I doing in this neighborhood? <laughs> um, and so I made a purposeful change to get out of the low end neighborhood and move up. My office was in the luxury market, but my business wasn't. So right. it was a very purposeful process and in, in, in what I went through. And we can talk more about it later. But then I was sitting on stage telling everybody, that's what you have to do. And Michael Valdez gets up and says, you know, Ed, my first sale was six and a half million dollars. Right. So you <laughs> know what? There isn't, there isn't one path. I think for those that were in my shoes, right, where you don't have the confidence, a little shy and uncomfortable, like you've got to go hone some skills and get comfortable in your own shoes. And then there's others that are just master networkers and they connect with luxury people and they're already in those wealth circles and they're yes. very comfortable there and they can jump right in and their first sale can be $22 million and it happens. So I think there are multiple paths. Uh, it doesn't matter what my path was. It's your path and, and deciding how quick you want to get there and just go for it. I love it. So we'll dig into what that path actually looks like in a minute. But first, I want to hear from Lisa and Noe as well. What was your path? Lisa, maybe you should start. Sure. Um, so, you know, I guess I would say, first of all, I have the um, uh, perhaps unmerited gift of living in a resort and second home community. So, um, you know, I, I'm around a, a lot of luxury properties. And that has been very helpful. Um, you know, honestly, my first really big luxury um, this is a, this is a, a, you know, this is an honest program. My first luxury was a realtor.com lead in yes. um, a very high-end community here in um, Mashpee and at Coquilla Bend. And what that taught me 
uh, with one of the things I want to mention uh, as we move forward, and that's about kind of luxury and luxury networking, is to really understand a little bit more about the, the personality types that probably will be a luxury seller. Uh, understanding the disc um, format, you know, is 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 really important for sales in general, but especially for luxury sellers and buyers, you will find that there is a certain type, and so you need to identify, be able to identify very quickly on your feet who it is you're dealing with as the lead. Um, and if they're married, you know, most likely there will be someone that's balancing that off, but be aware of that dynamic. And then more importantly, be aware of your own dynamic, be aware of where you find yourself on that disc scale and how your personality can really best mesh and support the personality of that luxury seller. It's a very different kind of conversation I have found in my experience than working with first time home buyers um, or working with kind of sort of like, you know, higher middle <clears throat> class second home uh, buyers. So I would definitely say that um, I broke in learning on the job. And then I thought, well, this is great. You know, like, as, as Ed was saying, I guess I can make a choice. So I will certainly, you know, I think any luxury uh, realtor will tell you the same thing. We'll take a, a mid low end price condo also if it falls into our lap, like we will sell, you know, Jenna loves to say big or small, we sell them all. So that's really, or Jenna, I'm sorry, that's really true. But if I have a choice, where am I going to put my focus? Where am I going to put my marketing dollar? Where am I going to put my attention? And that would be to a luxury community. And, and we'll kind of talk about the networking piece of it uh, as we move along. But that's how I broke in was honestly a realtor.com lead. Amazing. Thank you, Lisa. What a, <laughs> what a, that's a great story. And I definitely want to go down the road of understanding the luxury clients and their expectations and personalities and all of those things. So we'll circle back to that. But first, let's hear from Noe. And Noe, maybe you can share your path and how you've broken into luxury networking. Uh, sure. So my path was very similar to what Ed uh, mentioned earlier, you know, starting at a lower price point. Um, you know, the, 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 you have to be extremely intentional of what you want, kind of like what Ed was saying, but, you know, it didn't take me to really realize maybe three, maybe four years that I finally wanted to do more luxury, even though my background was launching luxury brands worldwide, mm -hmm. it was just kind of a process of really understanding real estate. But, you know, for me, it was just really trying to find, uh, open houses, right? So I found an agent who really didn't like open houses. And um, I asked if I could do his open houses and he wasn't real excited about doing an open house and said, you don't have to worry about being there to just let me take care of it. Just make sure you answer all the questions and, you know, the week before, so then I can be pre completely prepared. And so uh, I, I did that open house, picked up a couple of buyers and ended up writing an offer for that, for that particular listing agent. Uh, and it wasn't very hard. You just, you know, it's it's where you're hanging out, right? Who you're spending time with uh, and just being prepared. I love that. You know, so so interesting. This is, I mean, I think that's a common path, right? A lot of us started off selling just to the people we knew. And if we weren't in a luxury um, neighborhood, then it was, you know, you were going to your schools or you were going to your um, community centers or all of those places, swimming lessons, you're meeting people that way. And you, and that's how you break into the market. And then you do get your feet under you. Like, like Ed was saying, you build your confidence and then suddenly you're off to the races once you have some volume behind you. So this is excellent information. Lisa, let's circle back to what you were bringing up, which was, you know, understanding the luxury uh, clients, you know, and so if we're moving into networking opportunities, what is it that you think we need to know in order to, to um, build and nurture relationships? So I think like, you know, everyone will talk about in any market, it's really understanding your market. I wanted to say, you know, when I got that realtor.com lead and I, I did that at a certain point in my career, um, it was in a community that called, you know, a, a country club community. And I did everything I could to, um, you know, ingratiate myself with the local sales team. I went there on my own, you know, they took me out in the golf carts. We, we, you know, I learned all about the complex and so that I would become incredibly knowledgeable about the bills and the properties and, you know, what came with what and who got a, a membership to the club and what the membership levels were at the club and all of that stuff so that it just rolled off my tongue and it gave me confidence. And I think you're going to hear this over and over and over again, you know, find ways that you can start to develop your own confidence because there is nothing more important to a luxury client than dealing with someone who's confident and and, and vice versa. They will lose faith very quickly 
if you don't appear to know kind of what you're, and oftentimes we're thinking, you know, as we're, as we're shaking our heads, smiling, thinking, how the hell am I going to figure this, you know, but we go back <laughs> and we figure it out, you know, we come right back and we act like we've always done this and we've always sold at Willow Bend. And of course we know that the country club is blah, blah, blah. So, you know, figuring out how to become that expert in the areas in your community. I know Jana, for example, is in a, a beautiful golf community and she knows everything about those courses, you know, find out, you know, as Noe was saying, you're, you're hanging, you're being in places where luxury buyers and sellers are, and you're learning everything about those places so that you feel confident and you also can add value. You know, it's all about adding value. Um, so I, I would say that. I love that. Um, let's dig into what adding value actually looks like in reality. Maybe Ed, you could, I know you're running a big team. I've seen a lot of your coaching reels lately. You know, what are you telling your agents? Um, here's how you build confidence. Here's the intel you really should focus on when you're approaching building out your luxury network. You know, there's a couple of things. Um, the, the one thing that that your clients want to know is information they're likely just not going to get online, right? Um, it's the inside information, and maybe some of it's there, but it's inside information about who bought what house, who sold it, where they went, why, right? When you walk into a listing presentation and you know that Dr. Smith sold the house on you know, Maple Street to uh, Attorney Lewis, and um, they got three kids and a dog, and you can just start naming off these sales and transactions by name, by address, by price. You automatically earn trust and respect from the people that are in front of you. So just learning those sales. But, you know, it's not easy to learn just by going on the MLS and looking it up and trying to memorize it. It doesn't work. You have to be connected with the neighborhood. You actually have to maybe have run into those people, seen them at your open house, right? Connected with them. That's how you're going to remember them. So absolutely. Yeah. I think Lisa touched on it, you know, getting to know the neighborhood and, and knowing it really well. Well, what better way to get a, to know a neighborhood than buying a house in it? So I, I did the formula one time. It's so simple. It is so simple. If you want to be an expert in a particular neighborhood, all you have to do is figure out how to sell 12 houses in that neighborhood. 12. Just do the math. I just did a math on a $3 million home, 12 sales, a 2.5% commission, a 720,000. Divide that by 12, that's $60,000 in income per month. You can afford to buy a $3 million home at 60 grand a month in income. You could do this with anything. Take a $20 million beachfront home. Just figure out how to sell 12 of those. Next thing you know, you're living on a $20 million beach home. It's that easy. Just go sell 12 <laughs> houses. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not living in that beach home just yet. I think I need your math. <laughs> Um, that is so helpful, actually. I, you know, I think the simplifying of building that strategy and understand that, of course, once you have that in you, that's where that confidence is going to come from. And so when you're going into networking opportunities, um, how let's let's go back, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Where where would you start if you want to break into, besides buying a house at $3 million, what other things can we do to break into a market and start to build relationships um, and network in that luxury field? Noe, did you have anything? Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Go. Sure. So I, I think the one thing, money hangs around money, right? It's pretty easy. Um, you, I would encourage everyone to really find something that you're either very, very interested in or something you're really passionate in. because kind of like what Lisa was saying, it's going to show, right? If you're, if you start working with people and you're not really interested in either the subject matter or the area that they're in, it's going to also, you know, not be a benefit for you. But if you like boating, right, if you like certain things, if you like equestrian type, uh, events, you want to make sure that you go in there and, and get around those people. So Ed really kind of talked about being a resource. I think that's fantastic to know about the neighborhood, but more importantly, be a resource for that particular client. Be able to have a network of people that will be able to service that client for whatever needs that they have, particularly if it's in that particular area. And so you want to be what I always tell a lot of my clients. I want to be the first call, whatever it is. Let me, let me solve that problem. Uh, to be able to find that for you. Because as you know, when we're talking about high net worth in individuals, they have assistance. They have someone that they're directing uh, their wants and needs to. 
you know, so I want to kind of be that guy to kind of catch those opportunities. So then we can show them that we can handle it. I love so that. when they do decide they want to find a second home and another opportunity, I'm going to be calling someone on the screen. Right. So, so can you get, can you give us a couple of examples of what that would look like? Like how, what exactly as a resource would you be providing? Uh, so recently I have an opportunity to do an $8 million listing. Um, they have a, they have a wine collection, um, mm -hmm. they have art. And so it is a divorce. So I think at the moment we're trying to figure out what it's worth. So I basically offered and said, why don't I get someone to appraise all the wine? We'll go ahead and itemize everything. It's something you're going to need to do anyway, and then also do the art. And so he hadn't really thought about that. So I did an about face, kind of Lisa mentioned it already. Is it something that I know? No, but I'm on my way and I'm looking for it and I'm picking up the phone and finding those people. So right. any, anytime you have a networking opportunity, what's really a great is you're networking with someone to help you network. Right. So you're building that bridge. And when you're making a connection, like I called, I don't know how many sommeliers to really figure out, hey, who in the city is the best? Who's someone that's really knowledgeable can come in here and, and do an appraisal for me? They were like, who are you and why are you calling me? And they never get calls from real estate agents. Bingo. Right. So now I'm on the top of their list and they're seeing what kind of services that I'm providing. So the next time they get a call and saying, hey, I got to sell a property. Guess who they're going to think of? They're going to think of me. And so, so, I think it, I love that. so so there's a lot of different ways to network, you know, network forward, network backwards. But I think at the end of the day, it's time today to go ahead and start building that network, figure out what what channel of business you want to be in and figure out what problems you think are going to happen and find those solutions in advance and be ready for that. So what I'm hearing is we're very intentional about coming to a higher vision, figuring out how we can deliver a sort of white glove concierge service that's far greater than just real estate specific, but really accommodating all of those things that a, um, a, a high worth client can't Google, right? We're going to give them that intel and that support that makes their life easier. And that's the value that they're looking at. I, I, I love where we're going with this. And anybody who wants to chime in and add to that, feel free. Um, I do want to understand, you know, what kinds of places, if we want to, if, like, what should we be joining? Where, where could we be, um, you know, participating and meeting high worth uh, clients, potential clients? Anybody want to speak to that? So I have an agent on our, in our community right now that loves cars. So they became a member of the Porsche club and all these other clubs. And what do they do? They hang out on a monthly basis. And so that's an, an easy opportunity just to meet the clientele, the doctors. And if, he's, if you're very much into, into cars, it's a perfect environment to be in. And that's his form of lead generation, just going and interacting and finding out who's got what car. So that, that's, that's, that's a kind of an out of the box kind of way of looking at it, but find something like that. And more than likely there are going to be people hanging out there that you can, you can work with. I love it. And so you're going to your, you're going to your car show car club. And are you walking in business card first saying, Hey, I'm a realtor or how would you approach that? <laughs> Not at all. You're basically in there shoulder to shoulder, sharing the same passion, uh, talking to them, you know, you may or may not have a, a car. But at the end of the day, what you end up seeing is you see a lot of these clients um, that are very excited about showing off what they've earned, right? What, what they've spent time and building. Um, I, have a, I have a very special client right now who uh, basically can find cars for anyone at any price point. Uh, he is the go-to guy in my city, and which is really awesome. So when I go to these car clubs, I always ask the question, is there a car on your dream board that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. And have, do you have anybody you looking for it for you? Can I be the one, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have, I have a resource. So then that becomes a, that becomes a, you know, a connection. Uh, and I just stumbled across this guy. And, and in fact, he just graduated from high school. Uh, but at the end of the day, he created cars and tacos in our city. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really realize the, the impact that he made. So he created this real exclusive event uh, in, in a shopping center that would never, ever, ever have a car show, but he convinced them to do the car show. We had a $4 million Bugatti show up in this car club for the show. 
right? This car hadn't seen the light of day in four years. But at the end of the day, it was the opportunity, but maybe about 15 cars there. But that was such a great opportunity, a great event. But this, this, uh, my client ended up creating this. So if you can imagine all the people that were there. I love that. Thank you, Noe. Uh, Lisa or Ed, did you have any examples you wanted to share? Sure. I think um, as I'm listening to Noe talk about cars, it's a very specific niche, right? Mm -hmm. So I think one key, everybody wants to do luxury and just, okay, let, just let me in, right? But you have to identify a niche on, on how to get in. Uh, and cars was one of them. There's a there's hundred different ways to get in. So I think being in a niche, going into their circles, right? And those circles are often charity events. Um, they might be clubs like this and being a part of it and getting really involved. Um, mm -hmm. I built a few of them just to give an example. Uh, I built a sports niche. And <clears throat> that niche came out of my competitive nature because I worked with an athlete a couple decades ago. And I thought, well, shoot, I want all the athletes. And so I made this statement, I, I'm, I'm taking all athletes that come to LA. To, and so they just all have to work with me. And then more <laughs> athletes came to LA and guess what? They didn't work with me. And I thought, well, I got to solve this problem. So I said, I'll get to know every realtor in town that, or across the nation that works with athletes and make sure they know I'm here so I can ask for a referral. But really to build a great business for anything, you have to think about the consumer, not yourself. And so I had to like erase all that thinking and say, what is their problem? What issues do they have and how can I solve them? Then I started paying attention to the relocation issues and getting their cars moved and getting ripped out of one city, going to another city and their spouse needs, you know, a new hairdresser and a babysitter and, you know, all these other things related to that and solving those problems became the mission. And therefore that built the niche and then being where they're at, right? buying front row seats to the games and getting back, you know, in the, where they are after the games and going to the charity events and getting introduced from one to the next to the next. Because if you ever follow the lawyer world, some of you may be married to one or no one, um, they're, the way they build business is just that one-on-one -on -one connection that once somebody introduces you to the next. And I think when you think about how they build business and move that into real estate, that's an effective way to get these introdu introductions once you're in there to the next person. So I think, think about niche, think about what their problems are, how to solve them, and then get in there and then keep getting those introductions. Great tips. Lisa, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I think that niche is super important. But again, I think we've touched on it a few times. Have it be something that you love. So you're excited about it. You know, one of my biggest listings ever we got, we were boating. I mean, who even knows what outfit I had on? And this guy, we we had a slip, which we never really liked. We always liked a mooring, but we just, we thought, oh, we're going to get a slip. We signed up early. And this this guy came in and and he really needed a slip. He had a very large boat and and he had a mooring. So we said, oh, no worries. No, we'll switch. It turns out it was like an 80, you know, it was a, he was a yacht. And uh, just chatting on the end of the dock. And, and uh, he said, he said, so, he said, like, you know, let me know if I can ever do anything to help you guys out. And my husband actually jumped in and said, well, you know, my wife's a realtor. And I thought, oh, good God. And he said, actually, I'm going to be selling my house. And I'm not even kidding you. And I literally did not have very much clothes on at the time. I'm sure I looked like <laughs> my hair was probably crazy. And, you know, after a long sunny, you know, a long day in the boat, you don't look, you know, whatever. And that's how uh, that's how that started. So it had nothing to do with um, anything other than being where we love to be and being ourselves and being of certain wanting to be of service in some way, you know? I uh, love that. Yeah, yeah. And when we switch the conversation, I just want to make sure that we can talk about um, referrals in this context, because I think that's huge. Let's important. go there. Let's go there right now. What, what did you want to talk about? Okay, yeah. So I really, um, you know, and, and I had the great fortune of speaking with a few people when we were down at shareholders about this topic. And um, I really kind of like to walk in the world, um, really showing up and plugging in. And I say that to folks I work with. I say that to my, my team. I say that to people that I work with um, in every capacity. I am kind of a serial volunteer. It makes me feel good about myself to volunteer my time 
uh, for our association and also to other community organizations in my community, some other nonprofits. That I've realized over time and my many years here on the planet is what gives me my self-esteem. That makes me feel good about myself. And so that makes me sit up a little taller and I think feel more confident and comfortable in lots of situations. So I've done the same thing in real estate. I have a lot, I have a number of positions at the state, local and national level. Uh, and because I'm at those tables I and mean, people who volunteer at those levels are not people who are struggling dreadfully. They're usually people that are doing okay in real estate. They've been around for a while and they want to give back. Um, I, and, and the best example of that also would be, I'm also a major investor in RPAC at the Golden R President Circle level. So it's it's a pretty serious investment in the Realtor Political Action Committee. And people who are Golden R President Circle Realtors are successful Realtors. And so I'm at these events with folks, you know, and when, when I first became a Golden R President Circle member, there's only about 750 of us in the country out of 1.6 million realtors. So when I'm at these events with these people, you know, now we're up to like, I think 1900, it's still a very small number of realtors that are in that group. They have, they have luxury clients. And so when I get, when I show up and plug in and I volunteer my time and I give of myself and I try to make the world a little bit of a better place, they see that. And if there's anyone that would ever wanna give a referral to anybody on Cape Cod or the South Coast, or even they call me about Boston, where can I you know, put my referral, they will call me. And that has been an enormously beneficial, not my intention initially, but as I've been around the block a few times, I realized that that has really created an amazing opportunity for me. And so that is really showing up and plugging in. You feel good about making a difference and you also are putting yourself in a position to get luxury referrals. I love that. Um, I think it's often a missed opportunity that realtors, especially new realtors, are so hyper-focused on building other database of potential customer clients and miss how important it is to build those relationships with your fellow realtors. It just leads to better, smoother deals, more referral business, and all of those things. Um, Ed, did you have anything you wanted to add to referral or the importance of having realtor relationships, especially for luxury? Yeah, I think it's really important. I've spent most of my career, you know, trying to build relationships and trust from, from agents around the country. And from going to events, uh, you know, I've been a big Mike Ferry advocate and I've been to those events every year for, for 30 years. And I make it very purposeful when I'm there to get to know as many people as possible so they know where to go to. And then other luxury groups I've been in part of and going to those events and participating and getting known, uh, I think is critical. Um, so building that reputation across the nation is, is definitely very valuable. But Lisa touched on it, getting involved in a foundation or a nonprofit organization, getting on the board uh, is a very powerful place to be, which is something I've never thought about, was asked to be on one. And, you know, you don't get paid, but listen, you're, you're, you're getting, giving a lot of value to, to, to the people that they support, right? The people in need, which is absolutely incredible. But then you get to discover, I watched um, this, this plan take place to start to raise money for a new building they want to build. And the moment we got the approval to, to build it in this particular location, a guy on the board took out his checkbook and wrote a check for a million dollars to the foundation and just wow. handed it to him. I thought, man, how amazing is that to just be able to write a check for a million bucks? Yeah. And then I saw people write checks for $5 million. So just to see that and experience it is one thing in itself, but to be around those type of people that can write one to $5 million checks with no expectation of anything in return other than just giving back is, is absolutely incredible. And these opportunities are around us every day in your marketplace. And so being aware of them and looking for them, I think is, is really something that can help elevate you to that next level. I, that's amazing. A quick follow-up question. Have we learned anything from watching high worth people like this operate in networking events? Uh, like, you know, are we, are we gleaning anything about how to uh, maybe pivot and shift how we approach networking? I think it comes back to, I don't know, you, you meet these people that have earned hundreds of millions of dollars, right? They're very competitive and they're very passionate about their business. And when they get to that level and they're kind of at the end of their careers, it's all about 
finding ways to give back. Most of them convert to that. I don't know if they start out that way because I'm seeing them at the end instead of the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's what they're all about is how do I give the passion, the energy and the money I've, I've learned and created back to others. And the one thing I've switched my business into for personally was I've been extremely competitive and just trying to figure out how to get to the top. But now it's just trying to figure out how do you give more? How do you give more to your clients? How do you provide better service? How do you identify what their issues are and their problems? And how can you solve those and focusing on somebody else instead of yourself? I, I love that. I, I think that's just a great way to live life. Um, can you guys share maybe specifically what you are involved in in your market? Um, is there anything like I'm obviously there's a million different ways to go. We talked about cars car club being one example are there any boards that we should focus on are we looking to spend like invest more in getting to know um, our financial districts like where would you suggest what like first of all what do you do um, just as an example for people maybe and um, any other ideas you might have well I'll go first um, sure. so the the board I was talking about is a is a, a local board that takes care of special needs children it was a special board that was or a, a group that was created to help kids in school deal with bullying, right? And so they would assign a local professional athlete or somebody really that's well-respected in the high school to each special needs kid, and they would be their buddy and walk the halls with them. And so it changed their experience of life while at school. And then also while they would go to the grocery store and now other kids would see him and say, oh, my God, that's the quarterback's kid. And they go and give him a high five and just it just changed their life. So that's that's the foundation I'm on. But more in my my other niche of sports is I show up for every charity event that the team puts on. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's players there, sometimes there's not. But I pay attention to everything that's happening with golf tournaments and I'm participating in, in providing donations or I'm at the event for for other reasons and getting heavily involved. But what anybody can do in, in no matter what market they're in is stay closely tied to the schools, okay? That's all the people that are moving. Um, so if you can get involved with the school board or, or something to do with volunteering at the schools and being tied to the parents of any of the levels of school, I think it's a really mm -hmm. smart place to, to poke around. I concur. I concur. Lisa, did you yeah. have any other samples? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So in my market, um, I've been a director on the K Cloud Chamber board for years. Um, and that has been hugely beneficial. I mean, people who volunteer at that level are, you know, higher end business folks. And to, so to be able to um, be seen as a realtor who contributes, but also who really is knowledgeable, like I always chime in about the current status of whatever is going on in the market. Um, but they also, um, I think in so many ways, they're the ones that are connected to, um, you know, we have a lot of hospitality people here. And so they're the ones that are connected to other nonprofits and also to luxury clients within their own, um, you, know, you know, within their own communities. And so the, I am the realtor that they will reach out to. But also I, you know, I I'm have always been involved with a local philanthropy, whether it be Housing Assistance Corp or right now we're working with a philanthropy called We Can and they empower women. They've been around for over a little over 20 years, empower women to live independently through mentors. So there are uh, people, women primarily, attorneys, finance people, teachers that mentor these women that come in. Well, as a result of that, an estate and elder, really luxury, estate and elder law professional reached out to me, wanted to have a coffee and lunch to get to know each other so that she can refer business to me. So by contributing to something that was touching my heart through sponsoring an event that they have, through showing up, through using their, their space to, to hold events, um, actually do one of those aha uh, agent helping agents events we're going to be doing it in their their location in hyannis our next one so, right just by contributing being part of who they are i ended up getting um a high-end a high-end elder, elder law state attorney referral 
Love it. So obviously following our hearts and our own personal passions and finding ways that we can plug in in our communities and building relationships that way is a great approach to cracking into the luxury um, networking market. Once we have those luxury relationships, do any of you have any specific ways that you'd like to share about how you are nurturing those relationships? No, we, we haven't heard from you for a hot minute. Yeah. yeah, so um, I did want to go back to the last question, if I could, real quickly, because I sure. know that we talked about going out. So uh, in Dallas, we've had an opportunity to kind of gather all the luxury agents together uh, that are within the, the city, right? So DFW uh, area has over 3,900 EXP agents, um, and we're just reaching out to all luxury agents to, to network together. Love and that. So it's been a lot of fun because, as you know, if you are with or uh, with EXP, we all follow different organizations. And many times we might be the only luxury agent or there might be a few of us. And so what we've done here in Dallas in the last year is we just reached out to all luxury agents to collectively uh, network together, share mm -hmm. our, our listings, share our buyer needs. Um, and it's been a really great resource to, to build the confidence, um, to, to build the advantage in, in, in all these different marketplaces. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. So I think, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more agents wanting to join in. Um, it, again, it's, it's, it's the growth that you see amongst the group. Um, and there are activities and events that we are now creating in the area that will um, not only be client events, but also be agent events that, to be able to, to give more in, in the community. And what, so, a great, what a great asset to have when you're doing your listing presentations too, or just, I mean, I don't even know if we do that at this level, but when you're connecting with your clients and saying, hey, listen, I have this broad network of other luxury realtors and all over the place and how that can be more effective. But I, should, I saw it in the actually chat for a hot minute we saw Somebody asked about international buyers or, or business coming in and how maybe having that network um, helps you in that regard. Did you have anything to say to that? Well, I know that in our community, we have several agents that have uh, that are co-listing. Uh, we have an agent that has co-listing a uh, property in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. So we now have that and we want to support her. So we're all sharing it amongst our network within our client base. Uh, we have another agent that's uh, doing a couple of properties in Mexico City. So I think, you know, that becomes a, a much uh, bigger conversation because now that we can actually apply it and share it with our clients, if they have other properties in other parts of the country, you know, come to us first. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, did you want to speak to my earlier question about, um, <laughs> oh God, help me. What was I asking? Nurturing. 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 Yeah. I, you know, it, yeah. Noe's point, though, that he made about building a network of luxury agents, for those that aren't that comfortable there yet and are trying to figure this out, the most powerful thing that you can do as a luxury agent is just know stuff, right? And so when you're involved in these network groups that exist in your town or you create them in the luxury network of agents, it's about sharing information and deal points and off-market listings that are coming and why this home is worth $22 million. And all those conversations happen in those network meetings. So then when you roll into conversations with your clients, with that knowledge base, then that is the power that, that you bring to your clients and what they're expecting to, to talk about in, in those conversations. So I think that's the easiest niche to build because just a bunch of realtors getting together. It's not that hard to get them together. Right. Yeah, I agree so much. And I think that also brings up the point that we've kind of been dancing around, but I think it cannot be understated. And I love the fact that EXP Luxury is doing this fourth Wednesday open to every agent everywhere. Uh, and that is to find some mentors, you know, find someone who's done it at least, at least a couple times more than you. I mean, I would not be where I am if it were not for a gentleman named Jack Cotton, who is in my market, a luxury realtor here in Osterville, Massachusetts. Many people may, may know of him. He's been doing luxury real estate forever. He's just one of the most generous, amazing, knowledgeable human beings in luxury that I've ever known. And he has taught me so many things. He's on my shoulder all the time. And if I didn't, you know, we, we need to seek people who, who know more than us. And so I think by building that luxury network, 
I love that. And I wish that we would do more of that and continue to, to have kind of meetups and, you know, even some of them might have to be virtually. I know there aren't many yet, yet where I am, um, but that's so huge, you know, having that to, you know, the, to bounce off of our luxury group uh, in workplace, um, certainly, and other, other luxury groups that you might be part of, but finding a mentor, finding some people that um, are willing to share, certainly EXP, that's what we're all about, right? I use that <laughs> collaboration is the new currency. I just love that. I'm in love with that, that, that statement. Collaboration is the new currency. I really believe that. And EXP embodies that. And this fourth Wednesday embodies that effort as well. So I just want to thank um, the staff, Terry, you and, and Jeremy for all, all that you do to, to help us carry this message out to all agents. It's, uh, you know, it's an amazing, it's an amazing program. And, um, uh, you know, I, I'm so grateful to all of you and you're, and you're, into, you're, you're so knowledgeable. You've been around your seasoned pros, um, your leaders in your market, and you're really generous to share all this information. I, I see that we're coming up to quarter two. Um, Jeremy might want to start asking some questions from the chat. Jeremy, are you there? Jerry, I want to also um, note that David Lawson from an amazing location a second home market in park city was on the panel but i think he got locked out early and he's here now so oh well I, that's a poor dave let's bring i i don't know if jeremy <laughs> can bring him on or not i'm sorry i am not he's, there. Oh, he's ready to go he's there um yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. i'm gonna ask david i want to ask you a question because park city is my favorite second home city but for for the group how, how do you build a great network like you did when everyone's coming from everywhere else and they're really not there except you know, for a week or two out of the year? Great question. Yeah, that is a great question. <clears throat> yeah, with, with Park City being a second home community, ski, um, you know, there's a lot of really wealthy people that come here, but they come from everywhere. So um, I just try to be wherever I can be. But most importantly, I like to be where in places that I'm passionate about. So my wife is really big into life theater and ballet, so we get involved in that. Um, you know, I used to race stock cars, so I deal with a lot of the racing community who so many of those people have second homes, charity events, golf tournaments. Um, you know, a new thing with Brent is sell a home, build or, or sell a house, build a home. I love that. Um, so it's just kind of trying to really be where everybody is. But I can tell you for sure, Ed, that and, and then, of course, the Utah Jazz, you know, working with, you know, a lot of those people. I worked with Mark Eaton when he was a center of the Utah Jazz a long time ago. And you just get in with one and then all of a sudden you can get in with everybody else. It's all about networking. It's all about taking care of people. It is not about selling them real estate. Selling the high-end luxury, the high-end um, net worth people, it's all about offering services, offering things that you do, taking care of them. I have, like Ed said, they're from all over. I have about 250 keys to people's homes right? In Park City. And why do I do it? Because I tell them, if you, Ed, if you need anything, if you need to get a check on your house, you know, we only had 600 inches of snow this year. If you need me to go check on your house, I'll David, do it. I just right. want one of those. I just want one of those keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and then the other thing is I wanted to share this with you. You can't really see what this is. This is a resource guide that we put together. And basically it's the David or the Lawson team resource guide. So Ed, if you move to town um, and or you're from, you know, Newport Beach, right? And you need to know a plumber, a pet groomer, a, a painter, you know, a, where the life coach are, heating and air, hairstylists, babysitters, dry cleaners, florists. I mean, you name it, it's in this book, right? And so what you're, what we try to do is just offer, and we call it um, exceptional customer service and, and white glove service, right? And if you do that and you take care of people, you get, you just, it's all about, this is all about, this, this whole call was about networking, right? How do you network? The best way to network is to meet people 
do an amazing job for everybody that you interact with and have phenomenal systems and you know, you try to just make everything go as smooth as it can. We know that that's not possible, but I can tell you some of the best people that I've ever got referrals from are in the high end are people that had, there was lots of issues with the deal and I took care of everything. And those are the people that recognize it. When, it, when, when we sell a high end luxury, you know, 10, 20, 27 million, 14 million, in the last year, when we sell those, they know that we make a boatload of money, right? It's when we go over and above, that's when we get the referrals. And if everything, you know, every once in a while that deal just goes really smoothly, I rarely get anything from those people. So um, I was locked out, so I apologize. But those are basically some of the things that I wanted to share. But I can tell you the number one thing that I did to grow the luxury is, we all know that luxury real estate is a very, very competitive um, field, right? But there, it's competitive, but there's not very many people that are really doing it well. But what I do is I network with um, the other people. And I, I've been to Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, you and I, that's where we knew each other. I, there was a mastermind group that Ed and I were in selling the high end. I, I, I want to say it was 20 years ago. I can't remember. But but anyway, it's all about networking and talking to people and helping out and giving advice. You know, I've helped and I've coached 85 agents in Park City and people think I'm crazy. Why would you share that with people? But I can tell you it comes back to you. So let, you know what happened this morning, Ed? I'm taking a nine and a half million dollar listing. I got an, I texted over to somebody, an agent in the in our town that absolutely has a buyer. They've been looking for it. And I we sent over the listing saying it's going to go live on Friday and he's already showing it. You see, if you go out of your way. So one of the things I when I get a high-end listing. I try to call the 20 people that are probably got 95% chance of selling it, right? You just mm -hmm. make a personal phone call to those people. Hey, Ed, I'm just listing that house at four red pine, nine and a half million. It's fully remodeled. It's 20 acres, you know, whatever, you know, just wanted to give you a shot before we go live, you know, next Tuesday. I can tell you those, that is it, it and, and what I did is I did it and I did it and I did it. And guess what now people do to me? Ed calls me up, Dave, I got this new house on the beach, you know, 12 million, blah, blah, blah. Right. So. Um, so anyway, I probably said some of the things that other people said, but I apologize. All good stuff, Dave. All very good stuff. Um, we are getting a little short on time. I'm going to thank you very much for sharing that. I think that was amazing. I, I know that everybody here is really focused on. Uh, building solid uh, fellow realtor referral business and that and that when you have those great relationships with your fellow realtors, um, especially at the luxury level, that's where a lot of deals get done. And so it's very important. And, and thank you to everyone on our on our panel today who are here generously sharing. Jeremy, did you want to take it away and see if <clears throat> part of me we have any questions from our audience? Yeah, absolutely, guys. Wow. Okay. As a luxury coach, guys, I'm sitting here and I've got a page of notes of stuff that I'm going to probably go back into these guys and be like, all right, let's dish. Let's get dive into some of these facts and figures you guys talked about. That's going to grow, you know, your their, your, their business, but it's also going to grow your business. And so at the very beginning of this, just FYI, we did have a little Zoom glitch that only allowed 100 people in. So if you made it in during this first 20 minutes, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Uh, you got some good stuff. Um, and so we're going to send this out, guys. If you just now made it in, because we did get it fixed. Uh, if you just did, got it made it in, we're going to post this as well. Uh, post it on YouTube. We'll get it out there for everybody to see so you can share it out. And you can even rewatch some of these golden nugget moments that happened during this session, guys. So uh, I did in the chat, I did drop in two links for you all that are attending. Uh, I did drop in the link to the certification course, the luxury certification course, as well as I dropped a link into the luxury application as well. So if you guys want to access those links, you have any questions beyond that, feel free to let us know. Guys, we got about seven minutes before we wrap this thing up. If there's any questions, you guys want these amazing uh, experiences 
experienced uh, agents to answer. Uh, that's what we're here for. I think uh, Lisa mentioned earlier that, you know, the collaboration is really what it's all about. And, and you know, I am just honored to be able to sit in a room and hear from each of these guys have done it, right? They, they, they put the sweat in. And so now we can learn from that sweat equity and before, so we don't have to sweat so much, right? Uh, and so that's the goal here. And so thank you guys so much for joining in. I dropped also in their names, uh, all the panelists' names uh, inside the chat as well. So if you want to copy those, uh, you'll at least have them. You can follow them, that kind of stuff. Uh, follow my social media. I know uh, somebody asked for a couple of social media links out there so they can grab a hold of you guys offline. Uh, but I'm checking now uh, any questions that are coming in. I'm all certified. Do I have David, access to the classes? I, I'm going to ask David a so Christine, I was going to ask Dave a question uh, that I kind of saw in the chat because we can go to a massive rabbit hole. We'll try to avoid that. But you brought up this amazing resource book. And I had one, one question is, have you digitized it? Because there might be a bad referral resource in there so it can quickly change. And, and the mm -hmm. other reason I'm asking is everyone wants to know what this book looks like. So how can someone get a peek at what it looks like? Is it online somewhere? Uh it is not, but I I do have a digital one, and um, I we print it every quarter. I do not let anybody pay to get in it. I won't even let them give me a dollar to print it. I only allow people in that I know and trust, and I can tell you that two or three people get booted every quarter if because if they don't if they're not offering great service. Uh, but I will get it. Um, Jeremy, if yeah, I get, Dave, if you're willing if to I, share it with me, I will get it for you offline and then we will get it out to the group if that's something you're willing to share. I, I would love to. That's Thank you, David. I really appreciate it. All right, I I'll make it a task, guys. Today. I'll make it a task. Collaboration is the new cure currency. I learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> I will make it a Thank task, you, guys, for to grab with get with David and get that document offline, guys, and so share it with you guys so you can put your own spin on it in your own market. And it's a great tool and great resource. Great, great, Ed. Thanks for bringing that up, man. Uh, yeah. I saw people that are in the certification that are getting ready to go to maybe join, be members. It looks like that's awesome. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. Um, there's also, I'm looking to see what I missed. Anybody see any questions? I saw a question. I, I just saw a question earlier about somebody wanting to break into the, they're, they're passionate about horses and, but there's already people that are in that, you know, in that niche and they own it and they're huge. And like, what the heck do I do? Listen, just do right. It's, yeah. it's a matter of doing it and being consistent with it and just going after it and bring your own spin, right? Everyone has a different personality, a different voice. So just bring you, your voice and whoever you are to whatever it is you're going to go after and, you know, follow your passion, focus on it and keep bringing value. Keep thinking about what is their pain points? What do they need? What do they want? And deliver that information to them. Don't worry about who's in the space already. It doesn't matter. They could be gone tomorrow or you could just overcome, you know, be better than them. Or you're just going to get your share of the business. And, and there's plenty to go around for sure. Yeah, I think oh, don't you find... So go... sorry, Jeremy, go. Oh, you're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, don't you find too also that you end up building relationships with people that are sort of like you and that you can um, relate to in a, in a really, you know, grounded way that helps you build that out in a, you know, I, 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 that's what I found anyway. And so it's never that it, there's always going to be someone who's top dog in your market. And if you're waiting for that spot to open up, you're probably going to be waiting a while. Yeah, guys, you're you're guys, you're only competing against that top five percent. So just do a little hustle. Get there. And what's the Nike theme? You know, just do it. Just freaking do it. Put some just some hustle, some sweat equity in, and you guys can kill it in your marketplaces. Uh, I've seen it happen way too often that even newer agents, you know, two or three years in the business, have taken hold of certain market shares of people they thought they never could. And they're now the leaders in their industry for that certain niche. So don't shy away from it. Dive full in and just take it away from those that are that are not doing it right now. Take it away for those people that got comfortable, right? No more being comfortable. Let them be comfortable. <laughs> you just take care and, and you be uncomfortable and take care of your market, right? So fantastic. Love that. Uh, I think that is all the questions I'm seeing. I'm sure there's more. I'll go through the chat and message them individually, guys, if we missed anything. But Terry, gang, you guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for investing your time in 
investing in other people. I think that's an amazing thing to do. And you guys are awesome at that. So guys, if you've not joined the luxury program, feel free to reach out to us for information. Feel free to, you know, dive into our brains a little bit of how, you know, luxury is being done. And uh, beyond that, guys, thanks so much for joining today. You guys, thank you guys for the time. I know time for me, when I coach agents, time is an investment, right? Time is, is money. And for you guys to join in and listen in, I just applaud you all. Thank you guys so much. All right, guys, recordings will be out there. Thank you guys so much. Anything final statement, guys, or goodbye for everybody? Thanks for the opportunity. Keep going. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you all so much. You guys have a blessed rest of your day. And uh, see you guys in four weeks or the luxury members. See you guys in like another week. See y'all. Perfect. Bye-bye. Thank you.